I want to read something that Jana sent to me the other day um, to encourage me while I'm waiting for God to fulfill what he's going to do. And it's the chapter of Job 23. And the reason I like this, I actually, you know, I'm just looking for encouragement because every second is like just every second, you know, when you're waiting for God to fulfill, it's uh, got you on the edge of your seat. So I have this little document of scriptures that people have sent me and testimonies and stuff like that that I go through when I'm having a really hard moment. And Jana sent this to me the other day. And the reason I like it is because it really tells about that process that God takes you through. And the other day I was thinking, I remember what it was like when I was far from God, when I was being, you know, really afflicted, when I was very sick. I'm afflicted now, but back then, and I make this distinction, I've made this distinction before in videos and also in the books of affliction in which God is disciplining you and a spirit versus a spirit that you've been handed over to that is afflicting you because that's what you've chosen. One is for the purpose of discipline. The other is for the purpose of attack. It's for the purpose of bringing your, destroying your flesh so that you will get into a position to finally submit to God. And I remember the feeling, like the, the difference in that feeling that when I would wake up in the middle of the night, because believe me, I wake up in the middle of the night now and there are times when I lay there and I'm calling out to God and I'm rending, like immediately I go into rending my heart, rending my heart, calling out to him, praying, you know, asking him to strengthen me versus what I experienced before when I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd have heart palpitations and I'd think I was going to die and I was terrified and I was desperate and calling out to him in my flesh, never being able to hear from him, asking him to just take me. It's totally different. I mean, I was in a totally different state of desperation before in which there was no hope. But I have hope now, even in this desperate situation, but it's not, like I said, it's not the same kind of, it's not the same kind of desperation at all. So I'm going to read this and maybe, you know, give a little com personal commentary on how this feels for me. Then Job replied, even today, my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where to find him, if only I could go to his dwelling, I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. Oh, Job, <laughs> remember that God called him out on that. We don't have a case to state before him. What case are we going to state? Yeah, I'm wicked, but will you do this because of who you are? I mean, that's our case, right? I'm evil. You're the only one who knows what's good. You're the only one who knows what needs to happen in order for me to get to a certain point. But um, because of who you are, will you do this? Well, really, what is our case? Well, I don't have, I, I've given up so much, you guys, so much. And, and even then I don't have a case. Even when I'm saying before him, Lord, I've given everything. I've obeyed every single thing that you told me to do since 2019 when you called me. Things that I've never seen anybody do in my entire lifetime, nor have I heard of anybody doing it during my lifetime, except in the Bible, except in stories and past accounts of people who served you. But I have yet to see anybody do it in this world. And yet I can bring all of my righteousness before you, and it will amount to dirty rags, filthy rags. He already told us that in the word, and I believe the word, and I know that that's absolutely true. My righteousness is filthy rags before him, so congratulations. I've been doing it since 2019. What, what am I supposed to say? I mean, truly, when you have a real perspective of who we are and who he is, it's more of a position of just getting into that like humble position and and, and asking him, Lord, if you're willing, please bring me into the position that I need to be in in order for your will to be fulfilled. And if you're willing and I've won your favor and you think it's a good thing to do, Lord, please fulfill the promises that you've made to me and please don't delay. And yet all of those prefaces need to be met. If you're willing, if I've won your favor, and if you think it's a good thing to do, if you're willing... If I've won your favor and if you think it's a good thing to do. Esther did that with a human king. Don't you think God deserves so much more? That has to be the position of our hearts. If you're willing, if I've won your favor and if you think it's a good thing to do. And then you can't just say that. Like you have to, okay, if you're willing, rend your heart. And if I've won your favor, have I won his favor? Am I living? Is there anything that he's convicting me about? Because I can't literally say those words 
and know that there's something he's convicting me about and be like, ah, he doesn't see that I'm sweeping this under the rug. He doesn't know. And if you think it's a good thing to do, and if in your righteousness you're willing to get, to grant my petition, Lord, in your righteousness, in your faithfulness, because I know that I don't really deserve anything. Your grace is sufficient. I, I don't even get to ask for anything extra. I really don't even get to ask for that. He could have destroyed me a long time ago, and he chose not to. That would have been what I deserved. So verse 5, I would find out what he would answer me. Yes, you would, and you... Find out at the very end of the book. I would find out what he would answer me and consider what he would say to me. Would he vigorously oppose me? No, he would not press charges against me. There the upright can establish their innocence before me, and there I would be delivered forever from my judge. Well, you know what God said to Job at the very end. He said, who is this who obscures my words with my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. And you will answer me. And what did Job say? My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes see you. And I repent in dust and ashes. So let's take a lesson from Job with that. But if I go to the east, he's not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. God does know. He does know what's being done in the heart. And when he has tested us, those of us who are truly rending our hearts, those of us who are truly waiting on him and are doing right and have given everything up for him, we will come forth as gold. That is the truth. My feet have closely followed his steps. I've kept to, the, to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I believe this about Job. I've treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. You hear that? I've treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. But he stands alone. And who can oppose him? He does whatever he pleases. He carries out his decree against me. And many such plans he still has in store. Oh yeah, this is not the end of it, I fear. That is why I'm terrified before him. When I think of all this, I fear him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me, yet I am not silenced by the darkness, by the thick darkness that covers my face. I really love that last sentence. I'm not totally 100% sure what Job meant in saying that I'm not silenced by the darkness, but it does remind me of the darkness that encircled me previously when I was handed over to the enemy. And so it causes me to think, about that and it causes me to compare and contrast what I'm experiencing now right now is the fear of the Lord I don't feel satanic fear when I feel fear I'm, I'm reviewing everything that I've done okay I, I made sure that I asked him about that I've made sure that I've checked in with him if I'm doing this the right way I've made sure that you know like those are the things that I'm reviewing like I'm examining myself and making sure is there anywhere that I could have stepped away from him is there any way that i could have like heard not heard right you know what i mean but i wasn't doing that before that didn't even factor in you know i was just justifying myself before him like this isn't fair look at the life you gave me condemning him in order to justify myself but it's different now it's different now when i'm going through this i'm examining myself and justifying him. I'm justifying him to condemn myself because I know that God's not evil. I know that my wickedness deceives me. I know that if I'm in a position of, of being punished, it's not because he's bad. In fact, it's the, the exact opposite. And I also know what it feels like when I'm being punished and I don't feel like I'm being punished right now. I know what's going on right now. I know that I'm being tested and I'm being brought against the wall in order to stand, in order to refine me, in order to test my structure. I know that he is revealing his glory to others in this situation. And I know in order, to, in order for that to happen, in order for it to be accomplished, that I have to stand. I have to really stand and be that offering. I've got to suffer in order for others to see his glory. I have to be weak in order for his glory to be revealed through me. That's his pattern in the Bible. That's his pattern with sacrifice. And I've said on this, you know, in this process that there are times when I feel like I'm, like I'm smoldering on that altar. And it's a really hard thing to go through. 
<laughs> God just brought me back to that passage. So there that sentence, yet I'm not silenced by the darkness, but the thick darkness that covers my, by the thick darkness that covers my face. It's not going to shut me up. And I also love this statement, but he stands alone and who can oppose him? He does whatever he pleases. He carries out his decree against me and many such plans he still has in store. Who can change that reality? Like who can change the fact that God is sovereign, that he stands alone, that no one can oppose him. There's never been a God before him. There will not be one after him. He does what he pleases. He's the potter. We're the clay. Who can change that reality? We just can't. And we try to all the time with our plans and our tantrums and our will. But the position that we have to be broken into is understanding that right there. He stands alone. No one can oppose him. He does whatever he pleases. He's the only one who knows what is good. He's the only one who can fulfill righteousness. Our righteousness is filthy rags before him. And he has many other plans in store. So if I can't make it through this, I won't be able to make it through the later ones. This is, this is the booster seat. Like I'm not even ready for the big kid seat. Anyway, I hope that encourages you. Thank you for listening.